my side, I want to welcome everyone to the Community Engagement Forum's Community Coffee and Chat session, the first of the year. Um, uh, the Community Engagement Forum, we are a community of practice on community engagement in displacement situations. Um, we are part of the CCCM cluster, um, but the, this community of practice is open to it's open to anyone from any sector, any um, um, cluster, any type of response, um, any practitioners who are working on community engagement or want to learn more. Um, what we do is we, um, uh, well, we um, share resources with each other and um, we also organize events and these community and chat monthly sessions are one type of these events. Um, they're um, quite informal sessions where we invite contributors to, to um, uh, speak on community engagement issues that have been requested by the members, like today. Um, there's a lot of people that have requested that Tom will join us and um, do a similar session that he did during the um, CCCM cluster retreat last year in Geneva on failure. So today we'll speak about failure in the hopes that we will be able to, I suppose, mitigate it as much as possible, uh, specifically looking at community engagement activities. So um, Tom, I'm going to hand over to you. OK, thank you very much, Kirsten. And um, thanks for having me on here. Um, failure is, uh, I think, a much ignored topic in the humanitarian world. Um, to our detriment, so I'm very happy to have the chance to talk about this. Um, I want to start with a rhetorical question. So my big question here, which I'm not going to expect an answer from, but to think about is who has seen a mistake that has been repeated maybe every year? Uh, the really awful classic example is delivering blankets in May because you can't do a winterization response on time because of lots of various things. But that's not related to community engagement. So what I want to talk about is to say, OK, how can we learn lessons um, in a really productive way that uh, where we're actually getting the most out of all of the people in the room? Often what happens is the plans that are made are made by uh, by senior management um, or maybe officers with limited engagement and limited involvement from the people on the ground who are actually going to be implementing those plans. Um, and ultimately, wherever you are, if you're in Coxis Bazaar, if you're in Yemen, if you're in uh, Iraq, doesn't matter where you are, but the plans that are put into action, whatever's put into action, the details uh, the fine details are always going to be understood much more by the teams on the ground than they are by you. Um, because those teams are the, uh, those individuals are the experts in their own communities. They're the experts in the tiny, small, small problems that you often get um, when you're trying to roll out any form of community engagement um, in a population that's has obviously many different people involved in it. So um, <coughs> what's, um, imagine that there's been some kind of um, an emergency. Imagine there has been a flood. Um, and in this, after this flood, everything went really badly wrong. We didn't engage people very well, or some, we didn't engage some people very well, and they didn't prepare for that flood. This is a disaster. This is a complete failure. So in that scenario, what we might do is sit down <coughs> afterwards and have a lessons learned session. Um, and in that lessons learned section, to sit, we will sit down and say, OK, what went wrong? Why did it go wrong? And you might be in the position where, because this is a response to something that's happened, you might be in the position where um, the, the camp management team will say, oh, we didn't get our materials on time. The fault is logistics. Logistics will say, oh, it was procurement. They didn't buy them on time. And you get this blame cycle that goes through. The same thing might work as well if you're talking about this for, com for community engagement. Um, the team leader might say, oh, but my team in that location didn't speak to the community well. They didn't work with the imam like I told them to do. It's their fault. And you get this very, very negative situation where everyone is blaming each other and you don't get any practical solutions coming out of that meeting. 
And that's really sad because it should be a time to learn and understand what went wrong to change it to make it better. But often what that sort of meeting does is it just puts dividing lines between people that should be working together like a team. And when we're blaming each other, when we're pointing that finger, what we are doing is we're not being productive. And this is where the pre-mortem comes in. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. Um, so what we want to do is we want to change this around a bit, um, because if we are after a disaster, if we're then trying to uh, see what went wrong, as I said, there's going to be blame, there's going to be guilt, there might be other other emotions running high. And in that situation, people are not going to be thinking clearly, um, number one, but also people are not going to want to bring up issues if they feel that they're, I can hear Emmys on the line still, um, uh, people are not going to want to bring up issues if they think they're going to be, um, if they think other people will be threatened by them. Um, people are not going to want to uh, to show some of the concerns that they have. People hide their concerns. This is a really normal human reaction. Um, and what it means is that, um, especially if you're in an environment where there's quite a strong hierarchy, um, then the, the more junior people on the ground who really know and understand the problems liaising with that imam in that mosque over there, um, they're unwilling to bring those concerns up so that uh, because they they fear for their jobs, they fear they will be blamed. And therefore, those things don't get used um, and we can't use that information. So the pre-mortem is a, a different way of doing this. We start with an imaginary scenario. OK, so this is in response planning. It's not after an emergency. So in our imaginary scenario, what we're going to do is to imagine what might go wrong. This is a very, very big difference. And because we're going to start with uh, an, an imaginary scenario and say this is what might go wrong in this scenario, that's very, very different to sitting down and saying, all right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be doing our humanitarian response planning for the flood. Um, do you think we need to change the plan? It's not concrete. It's not definite. And because it's not definite, people think about it in a different way. So it's also about psychology here. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to have an imaginary scenario where we're going to say, OK, there's um, there's a flood in the flood. We weren't as effective as, as we should be in our community engagement. So we did not provide the correct information at the right time yeah. to the right people. Very, very simple. We didn't provide the correct information. We didn't provide it at the right time. We didn't provide it to the right people. So what went wrong? And the idea is that um, is that we will sit down together and uh, everyone has 10 or 15 minutes to write down various things about what could have gone wrong. Um, and then we talk about them. That's the movie. It's very, very simple. And when you put it like that, it actually sounds quite boring and uh, not that interesting. But I love it because um, I think it's a very interesting way of approaching a problem from a slightly different direction. And again, because this is an imaginary scenario, um, we, and we're not talking about um, a specific problem afterwards where there's emotion and blame and everyone's worried about losing their jobs because they all screwed up somewhere, possibly. Um, you get a much different response, a much more different response. So um, uh, it's important to do this, not just with a small group of people who are going to be implementing um, a community engagement, but um, all the people involved need to be this. If there are logistics or procurement involved in uh, in producing items for the community engagement, someone from them needs to be present in the session. So you need to have all the stakeholders should be in this session. Um, and then, as I said, we start very, very simply. Um, <laughs> with a clear objective with the problem we describe the scenario of what's going to happen of of this response that went badly wrong where our community our flood warning messages did not go out into the community the way they should uh, then everyone has a bit of time to write down what might go wrong 
uh, or what they think went wrong. Why did this response fail? And remember here, we love failure. Failure is important. This is how we learn. We want to embrace this. Uh, so what we need to do then is to say, is to also be realistic. So the fact that it's the heaviest rain for 100 years is not important. That's outside our control. But the fact that um, one of the imams more than the others doesn't like our organization because they feel that they should be getting items from us and they're not, for example, that's important because that's something that we might be able to control or influence in advance if we know about it. Um, and that might be the difference. That one small thing might be the difference between um, a, between a community receiving a message properly in one area and the community not receiving the message. It could just be that simple. It could be many things. But we also, again, need to make sure that we're embracing failure. So once we have come up with our list uh, of what of things that can go wrong, we then need to start with the most senior person in the room who then says something that they think went wrong. And this is important to show that failure is OK. Um, so you go around the room, you have a dedicated note taker who writes all of the notes um, on a board uh, so everyone can see them. Uh, and, you, and you go around one by one through the group, coming up with different uh, different possible causes, uh, possible reasons why we failed. And then once you've got that group, you go through this list and you find the most important items and then you try and produce a solution. Easy, huh? No problems here. Uh, and that is it in exactly 10 minutes. Um, so we need to make sure that we're being as productive as possible. And I like the pre-mortem because it's a good way to do this. Now, um, Kristen, if she's still here, um, has a, a handout for this, which she will be sharing with you um, any time from now onwards so that we can see uh, so that you can uh, see this and have this in the future. And what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to open this up to any questions that you may have. Um, we've got lots of time for questions and to talk about this, and I'm really interested to hear your thoughts. And once you have the, uh, the handout, which contains uh, an introduction, um, it talks about failure, it talks about the outcomes of the pre-mortem, um, the scope, because we can do this, as I've just discussed, with a field team. But you can do the same exercise um, with a cluster. You can do it with a country team. You can do it in headquarters with senior management. It's got that scope is there, it, that it can be anything it wants to be. Um, doing it in the community, which is also super valuable, is something that, that we recommend, but and there's a very important but here. If it's being done in the community, um, it should be done first with um, with uh, humanitarian teams working in that location so that whoever's facilitating it has got the hang of how to facilitate it and has made simple mistakes you might make when you're facilitating something for the first time. Um, because it's much harder to uh, go back to the community and say, oh, sorry, we didn't do it quite right. Can we do it again? Um, so that's where we are. Ah, welcome back. Um, we've just finished. Um, so, Kirsten, if we can uh, share the um, share the handout and then open the floor to questions or comments. Or silence. Yeah, I mean, you and me discussed at length. Um, mm. Um, all my questions. Um, I'm happy to post them here again, but I might leave the floor to the others, mm. so they also have a chance now. First, in case, um, are there any questions about the methodology, about um, any concerns on on uh, would it work in my context? Um, uh, have you thought about this? Have you tried this? Please share with us. I just need to think now when I'm um, attaching this one document. Lana. Lana okay. I, I, I'm going to start. <laughs> Actually, uh, it, I think it was 
thank you very much, Tom. Uh, it was a really nice uh, way of sharing your experience, but I wish you could uh, share a little bit more how was not just the outcomes, but how was the process? Could you could you quickly uh, share your experience? Because from my understanding, it's a kind of um, putting in place uh, like um, yeah, this imaginary scenario, uh, like a, 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 an alternative, like to think a little bit out of the box. But how was in your experience and uh, in uh, in the field, more or less, how does was the reaction of the people uh, you did it? Can you could you share a little bit more? OK, um, so you have to. Thanks for the question. Um, it's very, very important to brief the teams properly about what's coming up. Um, and um, and my suggestion would be actually to start with um, a sort of uh, some like, you have to be careful about introducing examples because then everyone will think like that. But if at the start you um, make it very clear what sort of problems need to be the teams need to look at. So, for example, uh, if your job is a community mobilizer, then uh, then you need to think about things that could go wrong with community mobilization. If your job is the logistics manager, you need to think about problems with logistics um, and making sure that that briefing at the beginning is very, very clear is, I think, the most important thing to avoid confusion. Um, but also then, um, whoever's facilitating needs to be very open because we want people to talk about concerns they have that they otherwise might not bring up. So, for example, we might have a, um, a volunteer, um, Mohibullah, who is working in, uh, in one camp and has a particular problem with a particular imam. Um, he might have told his team leader, but he's actually too scared to raise this higher because he, think he, he thinks he will look bad. Those are the sort of issues we really want to come out because those are the difference between actually having a really good community engagement intervention and an intervention that looks nice but doesn't do anything and doesn't achieve anything. Um, so we need to make sure that um, that we're really encouraging the the participants when someone comes up with an idea we want to make sure that we're um that we're not being negative that we're not dismissing things even if they're not quite right um that we're really engaging people and making them happy to talk that's the most important um part of the process over and can i just add one could you give back uh, did could you do this kind of case study scenario activity with um, with the um, with the community itself, like the camp uh, community or host community? Because I think it also could be kind of like um, directed to host community as well to understand mm -hmm. what they are they are they are. Uh, impressions or what yeah. what are their reactions for what we are doing with the yeah. with the people uh, in com of concern that we are working with but also at the same time with the highest level I don't know in HQ I don't know if you had the opportunity to do maybe not with HQ but at least with the uh, um, country directors or so yeah. do you, did you have any, any opportunity or could you give me a brief like uh, words there's two uh, different scenarios and far away from each other. Um, uh, so the um, uh, in terms of doing it at more senior levels, uh, when when I started started doing it, this the focus was purely on uh, on field teams and really small local problems. And during the uh, CCCM uh, cluster retreat in June, July last year, um, that's where uh, a lot of the questions that came from the participants there were about how can we do this at a high level? How can we do this on a cluster level? How can we do this? in HQ. Um, and there's absolutely nothing to stop this from happening. Um, in other industries, this is quite common and it's done at multiple levels uh, as a way of um, as a way of approaching problems. Um, and so I see no reason why you couldn't do it. 
Mm-hmm. Um, why, I don't know, why um, Sarah can't do it with Ocha, for example, or whoever it is here. Um, like, it should be possible to do this at different levels. Um, and again, it's just a way of coaxing different, uh, coaxing the concerns that people have that they're not necessarily willing to voice. This is the time when it's it's safer and easier to bring those concerns out. Uh, especially if people are being um, acknowledged and rewarded for um, for bringing up these concerns. Mm-hmm. Thank you. So I shared the link to the document. I just had to upload it to the forum and share it because for some reason I can't share the Word document. I'll work on it. In the meantime, Emma, I think, have, has a question. Yes, uh, when Lana asks a question, automatically the second question is from me in every single session we are having. Um, thank you so much, Tom. I'm so glad that this time I could uh, I could join. Um, sorry if I missed that part because my connection was not great, but um, I want I mean, as you um, know really well, in CCCM, we have a project uh, or like activity every single day, different things going on all the time in a very like easy and hectic way. So yeah. to, to do the exercise, um, do you have any kind of, I don't know, like prioritization suggestion that for this kind of activities or this like considering the scale of the activity or number of people involved or yeah, I mean, basically in CCCM, um, which activities would you prioritize for this exercise? Interesting. Thank you. Um, and uh, so firstly, normally, frankly, we don't always learn the lessons that we should learn. We might learn them individually, but then if the person who's learned that lesson leaves, we might lose that lesson. Um, so and normally, like, to be frank, over the last 10 years, the only times I've ever seen lessons learned exercises actually being done seriously were after there was a really big failure in some kind of a response, um, after something went horribly wrong. Um, and what this is, because it's it takes two hours, it's not actually a huge amount of time. Um, so it's a very, very low cost and very high reward way of um, of looking at this. Um, it's also, if you look at the handout um, afterwards when you have time, um, or now, but um, like it's, it's, this is a community engagement forum. The example we've used here is about community engagement, but you could do it at very different scales. Um, you could be sitting there talking about engaging with um, with local governments, um, and then different problems will come up from stakeholders, from uh, different humanitarians who are engaged with different stakeholders. Um, one of the problems that come up what might come up could be that a certain individual is frustrated with um, the organization because they're not getting certain items that they feel they should be getting and addressing that problem either by having a frank conversation with the person before they might cause more problems or by facilitating their access to um, inclusion on training programs or something else is a is a good way of uh, of then removing that roadblock before it becomes a serious roadblock. So um, I'm not going to give you a specific examples of of scales you could do with that because um, it's a very, very basic conceptual template that can be used in any scenario you can imagine. Cool. If anyone can't access this um, this uh, link or the the um, the tool via this link, just um, um, let me know or let me know how to share a document directly onto the chat. Is there a trick for this that I should um... be aware of? I think not because this is a chat with many people from many organizations. Um, well, yeah, the tool is going through step by step exactly what Tom was going through um, in his introduction. Um, 
but it's uh, something that um, he kindly uh, agreed to share with all of you um, so you can use it um, as a tool with your own organizations or with own, your own coordination teams, etc. Um, uh, are there any other questions or maybe um, comments to this? Um, do you think it will work? You could upload under files. Right. And there was a really interesting comment um, on there. There's so many problems. One of them is engagement of women due to cultural sensitivities. But from the planning stage, we highlighted that in case um, we don't consider women's voice, maybe we'll not be able to capture the needs in the right way. Um, exactly. Um, that's one of those very, very important issues. Um, you might find through, through this exercise that there are um, other ways of doing this. Probably it's not going to produce, um, the pre-mortem probably won't produce something that's mind-blowing that no one would have ever thought of. It will produce small subtle changes which can make the difference between a plan being good and a plan just being a bit, a bit ineffective. Yeah and if I may raise one point that we discussed before Tom, um, was uh, uh, me being from Norway and you being English, um, we we're also aware that you know coming into a context as foreigners, as um, uh, expats um, with white privilege, um, 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 coming in and wanting to talk about failure in cultural situations where it's much much smaller risk for us to talk about failure, even failure that would you know be our fault or would the responsibility would lie on us than any of our team members. Um, um, so I was asking you before, like how how can we possibly try and address that fact um, um, with this tool? Um, so I let you explain because I um, it really helped me um, um, thinking how to use the tool. Why? Well, Again, it depends on the exact context that you're using the tool. Um, and we talked before about uh, places where there's a very strong hierarchy as well. So within an organization, um, there might be a very, a very, uh, very strict hierarchy within that organization where more junior team members will always or free, most often will defer to more senior team members, which means that these ideas don't come out. Um, so um, and that same thing as well culturally within some countries is um, is much more uh, apparent than it is in other countries uh, and there are definitely places where I've worked where I've seen that there's been a, a very big difference in what, how much people are willing to say um, and what this exercise does is this exercise is designed to reduce those barriers and reduce those boundaries um, because we're asking people to to name specific concerns or problems that they may have. They've got time to think about it, write some bullet points out and choose examples. Um, and because we're starting with the most senior person, when we when we do this, the first person that says, ah, oh, this is where I might have failed or this is a problem that, that might affect my work. Uh, you're showing that it's OK to um, it's OK as the most senior person to make mistakes. It's OK to have problems. Um, and then as you start to go down, like that is a way of reducing those barriers. Those barriers are always going to be there um, mm. to some level. And it comes down, frankly, it comes down to the skill of the facilitator. Um, but to make sure that when uh, someone, especially when more junior team members raise simple points such as um, example, I am um, I am a community mobilizer. I can work really well in three of my blocks, but in the fourth block, I have a problem with this one imam. That that will stop me working in that area. Um, that's a very very simple example of um, a real tangible problem that that you get in many settled camps um, and highlighting that and then working out ways to deal with that is is an important way of reducing those problems. Yeah, and also the fact that um, it's 
is an imaginary situation. So it's mm-hmm. not something that yeah. actually is um, has happened. Um, it's not something that even if you're imagining that um, that there will be a mistake, it hasn't happened. You mm-hmm. can't possibly be blamed for it in advance. Yeah. Yeah, and you're reducing. Um, you're just you're reducing those those points of uh, possible failure as well there. Um, and you're reducing that blame. It all comes back down to that blame. Yeah. Is that someone um, asking a question? Or is it Henry's background? Hi, Henry. Hi, sorry, actually, I wasn't, I was unmuted. I thought you were going to give us an excellent example that would really hard had to get into now. Um, you can if you want. Uh, no, actually, uh, I actually prefer to listen. Uh, <laughs> it's it's been nice hearing uh, Tom with, uh, with these uh, ideas. Uh, often it's it's nice to get new ideas because uh, I believe in some of our contests, like here in Somalia, uh, like how Tom opened. Uh, I, every day we see things going wrong. Uh, we keep doing the same thing over and over and expect different results. So uh, even though it, uh, people might listen and say this is a bit theoretical, but we have to try something else it's because what we have is not working. Uh, so we have to be able to step out, outside our comfort zone and step outside of our day-to-day activity and say, holistically, is this working? Are we doing it the, the right way? Uh, should we find other means of doing it? Should we ask these critical questions? So it's interesting to listen to Tom. Thank you. Thanks, Henry. Um, Tom, you're on mute. You're too polite. Turn yourself on mute every time. Absolutely. Um, There's a really interesting question in the chat from Leila. Um, I, Leila, I don't know if you want to uh, voice your question so everyone can hear it. Hello, uh, we just in Lebanon are planning to implement a community engagement project. So I'm just asking if it would be beneficial to start with this exercise with the community engagement team. Uh, I think that's the perfect time to do it. Um, so based on your project, if you can come up with an imaginary scenario that's along the line of what you're doing, where you can say, OK, imagine that these things are going wrong. Uh, then now at the beginning, um, when you gather the team together, it's a good time because I'm sure that different people will have different ideas about what's going on. Some members of the teams will be concerned about some of the items, uh, some of the ways you're planning to implement things, and they might be only small concerns. But now is the perfect time, Leila, to bring those up, uh, because if you can do this um, and uh, it will give you, it might give you some really important insights that will help you to make the work more effective, to help you engage people more efficiently. Um, I and think uh, it's the perfect time to do it. Yeah, if I may, I'm, I'm very familiar with the, um, the project that Leila is talking about and um, and the process where they're at. So it's a new community engagement team, but um, there's so many, like you're saying, so many um, other colleagues in the agency involved and also in other agencies, it's a consortium. Um, involved in this process. So I think if you can include all of them, the key staff in this process at this point, I think it would be really good, Lila. And it would be great to hear afterwards how how the exercise went. Yeah. And Lila, if you if you want um, a further conversation at any point to discuss this, and the same goes for anyone out here, um i'm very very happy to jump on a call at any point um to discuss it i'm i really like this as an approach and if anyone is interested in in implementing this um and wants further conversations around it like my time is yours i'll add your email address here tom okay will i add the iom one yep I think there's another comment or question here as well yeah. in the chat. Uh, yes, Ruida. Yep. 
Um, hi, thank you so much. This was uh, really interesting. Um, I actually just was wondering because in a lot of the um, planning sessions now, it's and especially on community engagement, we are trying to look at how do we actually plan for community engagement together with the communities. And I was just wondering if you've had any experience of actually co-facilitating this session with, for example, if it's a community leader or a youth representative who you are engaging in the planning process as well. Thank you. Um, excellent question, Rita. Um, I have not, which I'm sad about. I would love to, but I have not. Um, the only suggestion I would have is that I'd suggest if you want to do this, and it's a really good thing to do, I'd suggest that you do this internally within your organisation first, kind of like a practice run um and do it do it within the organization where um where, where you have more control over the situation first um afterwards think what was good what was bad how can i change the way i present this uh and then afterwards um do it with the community i think co-facilitating is a really really good approach um and i'd love to hear uh, if that works I think we all would. Thank That's you. fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Let's see how it Go goes. For it. <laughs>
much examples of um, how it has been used yet and getting people's experiences, either good or bad, failures or or successes. Um, um, it would be really interesting to hear back from you. So we can uh, create a thread on the forum for this where you can share. It doesn't have to be you know, um, a document with a um, case study or anything like that. It could just be a few lines on, you know, we tried it out, this worked well, this did not work well. I don't know, Tom, would you be interested in, in um, hearing back from them? Absolutely. Um, would love to hear back uh, from anyone who does this. Um, it's such a good, good example of um, something very, very simple that just involves us approaching a problem from a different direction. Yeah, and it's um, uh, you know sharing our experiences will really help others using the the tools in different ways and like thinking indifferently. Okay, we can use it with this community group. It worked if we if we tweak it a little bit to use it with this team or or, or this um, in this context, etc. Or for this type of activity, um, I'd be very interested to see what type of of activities um, it works with when it comes to community engagement. Mm, so absolutely. Um, well, we know Lila might be um, might be using it, and um, um, and Ruida maybe. Um, but I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna hold you to anything now. But are there anyone else that are maybe trying of uh, thinking of trying this with your team members? I suppose if you. Tell me now that you're trying to that you're planning on trying. That does not mean that you're we're going to hold you to it and ask you for any feedback. It's just out of interest from my side. Um, if you are, and if you have any feedback, um, Ryder saying, thinking of sharing the idea with team members and to see how and where to try it. Yes. Yes. Great. Great. Fantastic. Um, yeah. Ryder, yeah. where are you based? Remind me, you might have said it. Um, um, I'm based in Nairobi. I work with UNHCR, um, but I support on AAP from the global level. Great. Um, please do let us know. Um, also, if it yeah. doesn't work, um, and uh, I'm sure Tom would love to hear if there's, you know, ways Absolutely. of tweaking the methodology. Definitely. Um, Will do. Of course, Thank I mean, so it, yeah, it would be rather silly if in the um, the talk that's about embracing failure, if we weren't able to listen to feedback from the, <laughs> from our own community. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And same to you, Lila. If um, if you do try it out and um, mm -hmm. um, and uh, it works, then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, yes, sure. I was just ha uh, trying to have access to the document to look at it and to see what, uh, I'm not sure if I had that, but definitely it would be interesting to look at it and see how we can um, add it or complement with other practices that we are doing, definitely. Um, I think you might uh, uh, try, Patricia shared it as a file. Um, um, here in the chat, if you move up a little bit in the chat and um, see if you can access it like that, if you can't access my link. Yeah, um, um, so it's a, it's a nice short two pager. Um, oh no, even, not even through, you can't access it even through the link that Patricia shared. Oh no, yeah, that's oh. harder. Um, I have accessed it uh, online through the um, through the link that um, Kristen shared. And we um, can also send it out by email after this meeting. Um, we can. Well, you can also join the community engagement forum, um, mm -hmm. which is very easy to do. I put the link up there, um, and um, then you'll have access to not just that document, but all the conversations around it and multiple mm -hmm. other community engagement discussions online. Um, so um, that's a very easy way to do it. Um, okay. Um, 
I have yeah. another way that I can possibly share it so that it's everyone can access it immediately. Um, which I will work on. Um, <laughs> harder to do it when I'm on the phone. Um, OK, um, so I'll share a link in just a second that hopefully everyone inside and outside every organization should be able to access and that will do for now. Um, what? Um, um, OK. Oh no, no one can access it. This is awful. OK, um, that link should work for anyone. Let's um, see. So fingers crossed. Um, Google right, Docs Sarah. does just win. Yes, well done, Rorida. <laughs> Um, OK, I can. Um, uh, Roxy says, can I share the screen? This is also very clever. I can do that. Um, sharing the screen is uh, is completely outlawed, though, in uh, in the community engagement forum. Um, so you I have, have to see um, what... uh, you have my approval. Ooh, this is quite serious. OK. It's the so first. I'm going to. Yeah, this is the first. I'm going to share a screen now. Wow, this is um, awful or a great honor. I'm not sure. <laughs> OK, so you should be able to see my screen now. Um, we are, yeah. Good. This is a, a two page. I'll remove everyone's faces because that's always awkward to watch. Um, so it's two pages only. It goes very briefly through describing what is a pre-mortem, um, which covers what I talked about. Um, that that it's done before the intervention, that we talk about what might go wrong. There's a bit here on failure um, and why failure is good. Have you seen a problem repeat itself? And here is the example in red um, that a failure um, may be a combination of not providing the right information at the right time to the right people. Uh, the final section is on the outcomes of it. So we want to have a better understanding of all aspects of our activity, especially if that activity involves people from different teams. Uh, for example, it might involve people from different camp management teams, or that if you've got items that are being delivered as part of this, it might involve someone from logistics. Um, now, they will all sit inside their own little world like this, which is what we're very good at as humanitarians. Um, what we want, if if they're all part of this lessons, this pre-mortem activity, if they're all seeing the problems from, that other people have, then everyone will understand more about the work, not just their own tiny bit of it. Um, it will also make the deliverables clearer and easier to understand. We'll get better knowledge about what the problems are and also most importantly, um, we get to, everyone is going to be communicating um, with each other as well. So if you understand someone else's problem and you've sat down and spoken to them about it and can see their position and where they are coming from, then you're much more likely to be able to have a good relationship. And there are so many aspects of humanitarian work that uh, become weaker and harder to achieve from uh because we don't like those people over there so we're not going to talk to them very well which unfortunately is a big problem page two very briefly the scope of this it can cover every type of community engagement activity or other activity works with humanitarian teams it works in the community and here mention mentioning on from uh what i said talked with Rui just now strongly recommends it to do this with a humanitarian team first and for facilitators to get experience before doing it in the community preparation what do you need to do it and then finally um the actual exercise itself uh with suggested time limits for two hours that's it. Very simple. Um, it's only two pages long. What I would love to do is to add a third section, which is tips for facilitators. Um, and I want to do this. Caroline has a question. Caroline has a question. Um, and I'd love to um, work on that as well. With wow, I raised my input. hand and then within seconds you uh you you called on me thanks can you go back a little bit to the end of the first page i think uh 
you talk about it can be done in the community, but then you only talk, I think, about community groups, not community members, marginalized community members themselves. Is that what I'm, am I understanding that correctly? And is there a way to do a pre-mortem with different groups of marginalized people? Um, a, a group was the most generic term for multiple people that I could come up with. Um, it doesn't have to be done within an organized committee. It can be done within um, with marginalized groups. It can be done with anyone you want. Um, again, the most important thing here is the skill of the facilitator and the note taker in that process. Um, which is why it's so important for whoever it is to have practiced before they do it with 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 community groups. Um, and again, it will be easier to do if there's a camp committee or a committee that meets regularly, it'll be easier to do with that group than it will be with uh, other groups that um, really are sort of um, the marginalized groups that are much harder to reach with community engagement, the groups that are usually are harder for all humanitarians to access um and to have meaningful access to it's always going to be harder to do this sort of activity with them um so my only advice would be just to make sure that the facilitator has done this once or twice before they do it with uh, more marginalized groups good question you were talking about what you wanted to add to the document uh, yes, I would love to add a bit on the end, um, sort of tips for facilitators, um, because so much of this comes down to um, how the facilitator manages the session. Um, and I I don't feel um, that I can do that effectively if I'm just going with my own experience of this. Um, so this is why I'd love to hear, especially from uh, people who can facilitate this uh, and to get some feedback from them. Um, and then maybe in the pro if anyone wants to wants to do this, I'm happy to have more calls with them. And even just during that process can come up with some uh, tips for facilitation. But I don't want to do that by myself because I don't think it will be very good. Yeah, I would recommend the people that are not members of the community engagement forum to to register or subscribe as a member um, so we can continue the conversation there and share experiences and share examples and um, um, you know, it's um, the community engagement forum is intended to be, you know, a place where you can easily share among several people as opposed to just going back and forth with Tom and then Tom would have to share with others again. You can just immediately share with several people at the same time. So um, please join us and um, and share your experiences and examples. And it's it's. Um, what people would say a safe space, hopefully, um, uh, uh, where anything can be asked and anything can be shared. Um, I don't know if you want to add anything uh, as an outro, Tom. Um, only to repeat what I've already said. Um, this is a this is designed to be like something that's very simple and very tangible and very easy to achieve. We haven't had a sort of a general conversation about um, about institutional failure and the sort of the pitfalls of life here. So this is specific um, and it's designed to be something that you can implement. Um, and really do encourage you to think about it um, and if anyone really does want to implement it as we said we're happy to have extra conversations if you would like it um, we're more than happy to get involved um, I think it's a, a tool that has huge potential um, to make small but significant changes in a huge variety of different um, humanitarian situations so yeah um, thank I you so much, to Tom. Go out and see what happens. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure um, having you sharing this with us, and uh, um, yeah, starting off 2024 with embracing failure. Excellent.
we love failure people are, people are thanking you in the chats as well oh, so um with that um we'll uh, we'll chat again on the forum and um, i'm sure i'll see you next month for our next uh, coffee and chat which will be advertised soon looking forward to it thank you very Thanks, much to Tom. everyone thank you to everyone for your really really good engaging participation thank you Bye. i love uh, sarah's um, <laughs> uh, gift game here it is oh, that's, thank strong. You. that's very very strong very strong game yeah thank you bye bye bye